Okay, people, welcome back to another Foosh review. Tonight, I'm taking a look at the McFarlane Toys Fortnite, Raptor, and Black Knight. Now, before we get anywhere into this review, let me reiterate that I know nothing about the Fortnite game itself. My kid plays it, but I've never just sat down and got into it. I'm more of a GTA Red Dead kind of guy. I like sandbox games, but... I love good toys too. So when McFarlane originally solicited these with the paints and the sculpt and most of all the articulation, I thought, oh, I may have to give those a shot. I got Cuddle Team Leader and Skull Trooper last month. I absolutely love them. And really, when it comes down to it, you don't have to like the property to like the action figures based on that property. Just, I'm just throwing that out there. Looking at the package, it's more of the same. It's kind of basic on the front, kind of basic inside, but that just puts more focus on the action figures themselves. Ain't nothing wrong with that. On the side, Fortnite, Epic Games, the names, their pictures from the game. On the back, same promo shots, different background colors but you also see Cuddle Team Leaders, Skull Trooper, Wave 2, the full size prop. <laughs> Hell I like these figures so much I'm considering these. What is wrong with me? On the other side what they look like in the game again. Top. Oh <laughs> my left hand's faster than my right. Same kind of plane but gets the point across. Bottom, legalese, all the UPCs, that kind of thing. I'm gonna get these open and see exactly what's going on here. And there we go, all out of the package, and spoiler alert, more of the same. And by more of the same, I mean awesome. Looking at Raptor first, only because, I'm not gonna say generic. I want to, but I, it's a bomber jacket, it's some pants, it's some boots. It's not as visually interesting as the rest, but that's not McFarlane's fault, that's the game's fault. And it's not even a fault, it's still interesting, it's just the most generic of the four I've gotten. But as you can see, the sculpt is still fantastic. You have these shells on the bandolier coming around, it's got the shoulder straps, the zipper is really cool coming down the front right there. The pants, baggy, it's got the bands around it, I like the knee pads. Yeah, they look plain, but the silver really helps bring out the grommets or whatever those may be. Down at the boots, you have the lace just really well done little pouch on the side the gloves band around into the jacket the tampo right here this side the, I'm guessing this is a rank insignia of some kind these are actually sculpted into the figure and then painted with silver but speaking of paint coming back around to the shells they even have the gold caps on bottom with the red shells the grenades on the hip right here it could have been all green but they came in with silver highlighted those no washes no highlights but going by the game design they did really well here then up at the head I'm a sucker for this look. It makes me think Firefly every time. I can't help it. The headphones are done great. They feel like a separate piece glued on there. They're not coming off, but because it was sculpted as a separate piece, it's not lost in the overall head. I, I dig that. You're not going to break this off. It's a soft material. Now you'll notice the eyes. I don't know if they're all like this, but on mine, he's looking to his right. And that kind of limits your posing possibilities because he's always got to be have his head turned or he's gotta be standing cocked a little bit. But this being this, and it'll be grouped in a bunch of other figures, him looking cocky over to the side, not a bad thing. And then with the Black Knight, oh man, I love armored characters, I can't help it, and especially knight type characters. Give me knights, give me cowboys, I'm a happy boy all day long. The legs are reused from the Skull Trooper, and that's not a bad thing. We're also gonna see it, I think, with Rex in series two. Hey, if it works, use it. And from what I know of the game, it's swappable skins anyway. So it's just colors, it's different parts and pieces. This is totally in line with the property. But up here you have the armor plate on the chest. You have a very nice mail look to the arm. Scale mail, chain mail, whatever this may be. The communicator or whatever it is on the wrist right here. This loose floating piece, soft material. Not going to get it in the way of articulation. Moves around, gets out of the way while looking great. I love the silver popped in here to kind of tie it together with the whole overall piece. The shin guards kind of stick out, but again, they're attached to the shin, not the knee, so it's not a huge problem. And That's probably hard to see because it's black. There you go. The extra straps holding the right one on. I like that. It, it, it's a little asymmetrical. Paint on the chest at first I thought was just a, it, and it may still be, just a blood splatter coming across, but he also has red in several places. And that works up at the head too. You see this tampo on the fin of the helmet. It actually has a little design in it. Same thing for the earpiece right here. But man, this helmet's a mean looking bastard. I love the silver they used on the body. It, it's kind of weathered. It doesn't look like new, shiny, chromey armor. I like how they plug the eyes in with this orange yellowish glow behind it. Oh, yeah. Now we know McFarlane has upped their game with the articulation schemes on these figures. It's amazing. After all these years, it's great to see. But there is still some fine tuning to do here. The legs are sculpted in a way to be 
almost you can see the seam so seamless is not the right word but it's the word i'm using seamless when looking at it in a neutral position it covers the gap really well but because of the way it's sculpted it kind of gets caught in places and you got to move it around you got to work it you also still run into the torso if it's in a certain position if the torso is over to this side it won't go up you shift it over here boom you got full range and you can kind of see scraping right there from where i've moved it a couple times but at the same time i really applaud what they're trying to do right here that look of not articulation oops it's all hidden it's still in there it still moves all around so it's one of those things you just have to think about before you go cranking on it and then with the black knight just because of the design it gets in the way of well let's just say the neck for now and we'll move down later it's got the bandana on the chest it has the helmet the shape of the helmet almost matches the bandana right there like it's one piece it's two pieces but you can't articulate it because it just runs into itself if you turn it and look down in there the articulation is there so they didn't look at it and go oh you're not gonna get movement out of it because of the helmet let's just do away with the articulation altogether it's still there it's just the design of the game itself and then because of the chest armor it seems like they didn't want to cut across it they wanted to keep that piece intact whereas on this you have a mid torso joint you have a waist joint here they shifted the mid torso joint down to right above the waist but there is still a waist joint right there but because of all the pieces together he can't get a lot of crunch but there is lots of movement there so like i said the design of the game concessions had to be made they didn't take away articulation they just had to shift it around and then say well that's the best we can do because there's a dumbbell joint at the top of the neck there's a ball joint at the bottom of the neck both together you can bury the chin you can look up nice tilt it would go even further if it wasn't for the fur collar here dumbbell joint at the shoulder with a cap to hide the articulation you can shift forward you can shift back and come up you can come down and then there's a hinge and swivel at the shoulder comes up swivels around oh see there you go right there <laughs> dumbbell joint socket way down in there Pop that in. I just got too rowdy with it. It pops right back in, no problem. Swivel at the bicep, double elbow, ooh, all the way up. Swivel hinge swivel at the wrist. You can go up and down. If you come around, turn it. You can go side to side. Ball joint at the mid torso, ball joint at the waist. But, oh, well, there you go. Hunch forward, arc back, tilt, tilt. Oh man, look at that. Holy shit. Hinge swivel in the hip, can come forward. It kind of runs into the crotch piece right here back out double knee because of the bagginess of the pants doesn't come all the way up a pretty good range hinge at the angle goes back goes forward that whole joint swivels side to side and then at the bottom they didn't angle the peg enough forward it kind of goes straight down so it kind of rotates side to side too his toe goes about that far for black knight same articulation in the neck helmet gets in the way but i just realized the neck shifts forward you can get them to look down a little bit by putting the helmet in front of the scarf a little bit of tilt swivel dumbbell joint in the shoulder forward back up down hinge and swivel swivels out rotates around swivel at the bicep double elbow mm -mm 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 -mm. hinge and swivel at the wrist up and down comes around side to side two joints pretty close together in the torso you can get a little shift forward armor gets in the way arc back nice tilt though same setup in the hips you come forward back out double knee same situation have rotation at the ankle hinge back hinge forward but on this foot the pin is more forward you do get rocker but if you wanted to get super rocker you can take that joint turn it bring it side to side and then you have full joint side to side and then a toe joint for accessories raptor comes with the drum gun it's a nice little design i like the metallic look of the metal but it's kind of plain on the wood parts with just the plain brown that and that matches the design of the game again made of a soft material so there's some flex to it especially here on this smaller part he comes with the ice breaker harvesting tool and then he has the raptor satchel back bling has another shovel on the side he's a shoveling fool i guess lots of sculpt lots of colors i love the silver that they put punched in on the buckles on these straps the red sticking out right here the canteen on the side even has some lighter green trim coming around it and then again silver for the frame of the backpack got a plug got a hole you just put it in there it's nice and secure black knight comes with the grenade launcher another nice design it looks cool the browns are plain i guess that's a running theme but the red stripe kind of stands out against it and then the kind of metallic sheen to the black parts and then he comes with the axe caliber harvesting tool and this is brilliant axe caliber it's an axe it's excalibur I, i'm down there is a little bit of twist to it i don't know if it's from being in the package this is a little bit thicker plastic harder to manipulate maybe i can get some heat on that 
straighten it out. And then he has the black shield back bling. That's hard to say real fast. Back shield black bling. Black bling. Black shield back bling. Great tampo on it. The heavy white outline. And then if you look closer, there's some dragon details in gray and red. The same thing. Pin hole plugs into the back a little bit tighter than the other and then as advertised and i think in the game you can switch the back bling between the characters for comparison here they are with the rest of series one you have skull trooper you have cuddle team leader they fit together which they're from the same line they're from the same property they should fit together but they just look fantastic all lined up beside each other but definitely not a six inch line this is a seven it's advertised that way a seven inch scale action figure line which is more in line with NECA's seven inch movie style stuff but then you run into the problem of the proportions from the game. It's a little bit cartoony. It's supposed to be. Nothing wrong with that. So if you wanted to use this for fodder with more realistic stuff, it may not work in that aspect. And then as always, here they are with Gus. How many times have I told you not to invite Darth Vader to our parties? Hmm? So at the end of the day, two more home runs in this line. Being perfectly honest, I still like Cuddle Team Leader best. She is just the most visually interesting and really pops whenever she's put on a shelf anywhere. But I love the whole line so far. McFarlane has done a, such a great job with these action figures. They look like the character models. They're fantastically sculpted, great paints on them, and really the huge surprise, again, I can't say this enough, they really up their game when it comes to articulation. The articulation here is better than some of my import or even Marvel Legends action figures. I can't believe I get this excited about toys for a property I know nothing about. It still blows my mind. The action figures have made me care about the characters more than the original game has. So I'm in. I'm down. I'm in for Series 2. I'm a fan now of McFarlane. McFarlane toys after all these years and of Fortnite characters. They just make for an awesome, visually interesting shelf. So if you like the review, comment, like, subscribe. I'll catch you on the foosh.